up everybody and welcome back to the scripted kingdom my name is pharaoh and thank you for tuning the fuck in as i tune the fuck in or whatever period so yesterday i just watched a nightmare before christmas for basically the first time ever because girl i didn't know what the fuck happened in that movie and it's never no shade so definitely get into that review on youtube go check it out on my youtube channel if you want to get into that reaction that i did of nightmare before christmas now i'm here to talk to you about all my feelings that i had about the movie and my review of it it is halloween so it's definitely giving halloween vibes so i loved that i went and watched this halloween slash christmas movie and let's just get into the review firstly i'm gonna give a non-spoiler review so no not a spoiler review for a nightmare before christmas fuck it i'm doing it for everything else non-spoiler review first of all i will give the movie honestly a 4.5 and it's crazy that i'm saying that because while i was watching it i didn't necessarily think that's what i would give it but i slept on it had had a good moment and over time it's like that's that's what i feel about it i wasn't feeling so highly as soon as i was done with the movie i was like oh this is good but i didn't think it would be up there up there but i'm gonna give it 4.5 which is what like a 9 out of 10 when you when you do the the transition yeah like a 9 out of 10 and i think that's valid i really enjoyed this movie because it was a musical which call me stupid call me dumb i didn't really know well i really didn't even think about it being a musical because i never really watched the movie i'm telling y'all i didn't really get into it but it's a whole musical and the music in that movie is phenomenal and i love the way that it helps drive the story forward that's really what musicals are supposed to do no shade but a recent musical i just watched called joker 2 didn't do that so i literally forgot that musicals are supposed to also drive the story forward it's basically dialogue it's like a monologue for a character to kind of understand their perspective and this movie did that so beautifully and i literally loved it there is song like almost every single song i was fucking with um this is halloween what's this i sing what's this on a daily and i haven't even really seen this movie fully through that's how iconic that song is like the music in this in this movie is amazing even the um after jack decides that he wants to go and he wants to be santa claus so bad and he leaves and sally is is there and she's afraid and she starts singing like near the graveyard and stuff that song was so beautiful her voice was so beautiful everyone's voice was gorgeous it worked so well and i really really just loved all of the music from literally jack's monologue when he's climbing up the mountain uh, uh sally's monologue i need to i need to look up these names because give me one moment i'm gonna look up the names of the songs because i need to know i need to know jack's lament it's called jack's lament the one that he was singing when he was walking up the mountain that was an amazing song his voice was so sweet and then the meaning of it he's like talking about how he's praised and put on this pedestal for what he does but he's not happy doing what he does and it's like oh that's deep mamas i'm gonna get a little sad even thinking about it and that was a beautiful song very beautiful lyrics and then it also gave us such a deep perspective of how jack felt about himself within the movie and i really really loved that so so much and then the song by sally was called sally song lol sally song was very was very very beautiful as well so i really really just loved almost all of the songs honestly literally all of the songs every single song i was like tuned the fuck in even when the little kids and they was uh singing they have to go kidnap santa claus forgot how that song went but that was that was the eat too so honestly all the songs was the eat all the music was the eat and it's like considering this is a musical and the music is eating i'm gonna have to give it a high score just for that period 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 so the music was beautiful really well written really wonderful score and they all all the songs were placed in a moment in the story where it didn't feel overwhelming it didn't feel out of place it felt perfectly timed every time they started to sing and it's like ah oh, that's exactly how you pull off a musical and they hit it on the motherfucking head loved it now getting into the story it's basically like a short story like that's how i felt about it because the movie is very short it's only like an hour and 15 minutes and it just really feels like like a short story was was told and it was told so concisely there was not a scene 
that was unnecessary in the movie. Every scene meant something and every scene was told in a way for, for the viewer to fully grasp the understanding of what's happening without having to make it overbearing. Nothing was drawn out longer than what it needed to be. Everything was exactly the length it needed to be and there was no extra. And that's why the movie was so short, but it was like short and sweet and simple. And I really love how short it was because we didn't need anything else. They gave us exactly what we needed to convey the story and to convey Jack's progression through who he was at the beginning, lamenting his position and to where he was at the end, loving it and finding a creative way to make it work. And even going more into Jack's feelings, it's like such a deep and real story, but it's also unique. Like a lot of movies are kind of telling the same story again and again and again, you know? And the Jack's story, this story has been told before, but it's so rare. It's rare when you get a full movie and the lesson to be learned by the main character is just how to have fun or just how to get your creative juices back flowing. He basically has like writer's block. He has like he 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 has a lack of passion for what he's doing for a living and he knows he should have a passion for it and he wants to have a passion for it and all this movie is is him trying to find regain his passion for being the pumpkin king and it's like wow it's so simple and it sounds so simple but it's so deep and it's so real it's something every single person can experience having supposed to have a passion or supposed to have um drive and you're lacking drive and you're sitting there and you're laying in your bed and you're like damn i don't feel like doing this 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 and this but i want to but i can't i don't have any passion to do it so you have to go find your passion and i love that the story was told so simply and so short and so sweet because it doesn't need to always take all of this explaining to get that out he got his he got that lament out in the song in that one song we understood fully his perspective and i totally love that and the journey he went on to find it I felt was so well thought out even the fact that he was so sad and he was so depressed so he was walking through the woods and he just wanted to be alone and that was how he stumbled upon the tree it's like him allowing his emotions to guide him is what guided him to the Christmas town. And I know that sounds like maybe I'm thinking too much, but girl, I don't give a fuck. Like I'm thinking a lot. Like I loved it because it's like, it's true that even in real life, if you're sad and you feel like you need to go on a walk, you should be, you should feel like you should go on a walk and you should just walk until you don't feel like walking no more. And that's exactly what he did. Like it had been overnight. It was the morning and he had been walking the whole time because that's what his body was telling him to do. That's what his feelings were telling him to do. If you need to go cry go cry if you need if you feel like damn i need to go be erratic and just go on a random trip go on a random trip if you feel like i need to run across the world like forrest gump and go running forever go run forever and i love that that's what he i love that that's how he found the tree by literally just doing what his emotions was making him feel like doing and so when he found the tree and he went into christmas town he was so enamored and stuff and i loved i just loved the path from following his emotions finding the the solution that he wanted to find and then trying to figure out how this can work into what he's trying to do and at first i was like hold on you're doing a lot because he was trying to make the town help him be santa claus and at first i was like oh he's gonna try christmas at halloween town he's gonna try to have a christmas at halloween town but that's not what he was trying to do and i was like oh girl you should be trying to have christmas at halloween town you shouldn't be trying to be santa claus and learn that way in christmas town so i think he was missing the point but i'm glad that eventually by the end he's like look now i got ideas for how i can run halloween next year and now i feel good and happy about being the 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 king the the pumpkin king because because I know there's multiple different ways to do this shit. I don't got to do the same boring shit every year. And it's like, I fucking loved that. I love that. I love that. I love that. And by the end of it, when Santa Claus like had it snowing there, I was like, they need to start collaborating. He needs to go and do Halloween one year at Christmas Town, And Christmas Town needs to come over here. And Santa needs to do Christmas here one time, one day. So it can like, you know, collaborate. It could be fun. Because don't nobody want to have Halloween all the time. That's why Jack was bored. You know? So yeah, loved that. And it started to make me wonder, especially by the time I was done with the movie, why there hasn't been a sequel to this movie. I think it kind of might go back to what I was saying at the beginning. The story was complete. 
and it was complete in such a short amount of time and they they wrapped it up in a little bow and it was like that's it that's all you need to know about jack but just for like the fun of it all because it is like technically a kid's movie i feel like it would have been so fun to explore the other towns the easter town and the valentine's town and the thanksgiving town like that would have been so fun to kind of explore the rest of them especially like as a kid and if i was growing up and this became a series it probably would have been way more of a staple in my in my house it's like we have a we have a series for every ho holiday like oh it would have been nice i feel like it would have been so fun but they didn't do it and i'm not mad that they didn't because like i said it really stands alone and it works so well and it's such a well-written story getting into the characters for it to have been an hour I feel like I know more about Jack than I do about thousands of characters that have been on three hour movies. There's been characters on three hour movies that has been on series for four movies in a row. And I don't know as much about them that I felt like I knew about Jack. He was so well written and putting a character through like an internal crisis really helps the viewer get to know who they were. And we had that with him and we had that with Sally. Sally like knowing that this is kind of her creator and that little um, Professor Man was her creator and she did have like a debt to him in a way. So she kept kind of ending up back there because it's like, I mean, shit, that's where I was made. He had to fix my arm, stuff like that. It makes sense because that's, that's who created her. But the conflict she's having is she's still now her own individual person. She wants to go out and she wants to do what she wants to do. And it's like, there's levels to even that because you could think of that as a parent and a child relationship. And now the child is growing up. They're 18 and they want to get out, get out of of the house and then you can also just think of it and be empathetic of her own situation and just consider like imagine you're in a situation where you're trapped or you feel like you're trapped like even a trigger warning but like a domestic violence situation or like a situation where you feel like you have to stay with someone who has been treating you badly it doesn't even have to get too extreme and it's like all of these situations you still feel like you need to stay or you really really want to leave and something's keeping you there like kids or your love and stuff like that and it's like it really can represent so many things and they put it in the small hour movie and i fucking love it it ate it ate it ate it ate it ate, it ate so bad and then even the subtle things because if you notice the mayor of the town he's really like a representation of politics in general politicians in general they have him two face have two faces and it's like that's such an obvious play and then also when he's like knocking on jack's door he's like jack come do your job mamas like wh what are we gonna do without him and it's like he's fully reliant on jack to do all the work for him you're the mayor but Jack's organizing Halloween, which is literally the name of the town, Halloween Town. You're the mayor of Halloween Town, but a citizen, Jack, is the one, well, the Pumpkin King, so he's still relevant. But it's like, he's the one doing all the work when it's like, you're the mayor, quotations. You're just the figurehead. And it's really like an example of society. And I love that they dribbled that into there as well. It's like, God damn, this is a good movie. What did I give it? A, a 4.5? The way I want to bring it up to a five because I'm like, where did it miss at? For And I love to judge movies for what they're meant to be. If the movie is supposed to be a musical, I want to judge it as a musical. If the movie is clearly supposed to be satirical, I want to judge it as satirical, whatever it is. Because I remember me and my friends a while ago, we went and we watched Krampus. The year it came out, we went and watched Krampus in theaters was that marketed very weird because it was marketed like a horror movie yes but when i went and did my research it is categorized as a horror comedy and when i'm re reviewing a movie as a horror com com comedy like krampus i was like well shit i laughed and i felt like it was a horror comedy it achieved its goal very well i didn't love that i was surprised but it achieved the goal that it wanted to achieve which is be a horror comedy and with this movie it's it's a it's a good it's a good holiday movie for both christmas and halloween it's a great musical and it, it tells a great story so everything it needed to achieve it achieved at the utmost i can't even think of many negatives from this i can't think of any negatives from this movie and of course there probably are some people who probably have a degree in film it's probably like yes but even the fact that it was stop motion is it called stop motion what is it called one moment yes it was stop motion motionly created so that means these niggas was in there moving Jack's hand every every five seconds. Like what? That's fucking iconic. The work put into this movie. And then the story was good. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. Like 10, 10, 10s across the board. I changed my rating. 
4.5 for what? This is a five. This is five stars. Five out of five. Period. Period, period, period. Period, period, period. It did exactly what it fucking needed to do. Fucking love this story. Fucking, fucking love it. Let's also get into the villain. I don't know how they did it, but within an hour and fucking nine minutes, they created an amazing villain. First of all, Oogie Boogie was barely even the antithesis to Jack. Jack had like two antagonists. One, of course, was Oogie Boogie, but the main one was himself, Him, his, his own lament for his job. And it's like to have Oogie Boogie not even be the main cause of shit. Like Oogie Boogie wasn't sitting out his minions to go fuck shit up. The minions just decided to fuck shit up on their own. Oogie Boogie wasn't like, I'm finna go eat, finna go fuck with Jack and what he's doing. It was not, he was not a direct villain to Jack like that. He was not worried about what Jack was doing until it got brought to him. And it's like very interesting that he still came across as this super iconic super relevant villain at the end because it's like the way they introduced him without showing who he was the way these three little kids were the one to be the first people to bring him up into the story the way jack said and don't tell oogie boogie it's like all of those elements make him make oogie boogie seem menacing it made him seem more of a a villain than even what like actually happened he's only in the motherfucking movie for like five minutes total on the screen and it's like he's still this figure that you know is like a big catalyst and, and is a is, is a very important figure within halloween town just in general by the way that people talk about him and then they did not rush to finally show us his face like at first they just showed us the shadow they showed him talking with with just his shadow on the wall that was very interesting and then we when we finally got the the reveal he's like <clears throat> eating it the fuck up like he's eating up santa claus who you think is this mystical person he's eating up sally sometimes and then it's like it takes jack saving them <clears throat> for him to like get defeated and it's like he just came across so villainous and all of the things he was saying like to santa claus and to sally it's like i don't i don't know like just the way that he spoke and the kind of the the comedy behind the words he was saying but also he was acting in such a i don't know such a powerful way like he he was so confident and then the way that he spoke was like with no fear and he was like acting without care of anything else i don't know the expression of oogie boogie as a villain embodies the concept of a villain in every single way even the voice acting for it was killer the music and the way that he was singing was killer like it eats in every sense of the fashion i love him as a villain and it's like i don't even know why i love him as a villain so much he was barely on the screen but it's like he embodied villain that fast and jack em embodied protagonist that fast when jack when oogie boogie turned around that um that table and jack was on it chilling i was like yes jack and it's like period and it's like the fact that i was feeling that excited for jack to save them against oogie boogie shows how good of a protagonist jack is and how um and how good of a villain oogie boogie was and it's like even like throughout the movie when they would show jack they would show him like reading and researching and it's like that's another layer to jack it's like oh he's an intellectual he's kind of a little nerd and it's like i just love that they threw all those elements in so quickly and so precisely and didn't drag them out to show us deeper parts of jack's you know personality and even oogie boogie's personality we got a lot of within that time and same with sally i just feel like they killed it they killed it they killed it with the characters and you know i love a character y'all i love a good character so yes tens across the board very very wonderful movie very beautiful even the lesson it told is such a rare lesson but it's such an important lesson to learn y'all gotta go for your passions and you gotta figure out a way to make your passions work for you and if you're feeling like you got writer's block and you don't want to do nothing you're gonna have to go to christmas town <laughs> and figure out something go and it's like it's i'm not it's it's a joke but it's also not a joke i, I see people all the time they're like the irony that he went to the town most opposite of him and god, 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 god that's the point if you're feeling like you can't get nowhere in life you need to do something the opposite of your comfort zone you need to go all the way out of your comfort zone to remind yourself how you can find joy in where you're at right now even if you don't stay out of your comfort zone even if you go on a vacation to to australia and you don't stay in australia once you come back to america you're going to be like oh my god my experience in australia was so big like how can i make my that feeling i had over there the feeling i have 
here where I'm at. And then you start to figure stuff out. Like we're always learning as humans. And I feel like that was the point of the movie. And I really, really loved it. I really did y'all. Oh, I'm going to go watch it again. I'm going to go watch it in theaters. Gee whiz. So yes, five stars to correct myself from earlier. Cause that was a lie. Okay. Period. Get into this movie. I would recommend this movie for everybody. Old, young, middle-aged, whatever it is. Everybody watch this movie right the fuck now. It was amazing. Oh my God. It's like, I literally just realized how much I liked it, y'all. I'm telling you, just within this 20 minute video, I'm telling you, like, I didn't even know. So yes, 10, 10, 10 across the board, get into it or whatever, period. And be here every weekend. I will be posting more reactions, more reviews, get into it or whatever. And thank you for tuning in with the Scripted Kingdom, baby. We out. For now. Bye.